Hello and welcome to the Federal. Pastors attacked, prayers disrupted, churches and prayer halls vandalized, and worshippers harassed. These have become a frequent occurrence in Karnataka over the last one year. The People's Union for Civil Liberties in Karnataka has documented 39 such incidents of violence against Christians in the state from January to November. While the report documented 39 incidents, it also reported that many other incidents of violence against Christians went unreported. The report concluded that Karnataka has been constantly witnessing a sharp rise in attacks against Christians. The report alarmingly stated that the police backed the Hindutva mobs in carrying these attacks. The report even established a pattern on how these attacks are carried out. It states that Hindutva groups organized a mob and identify places in their locality where Sunday prayers take place. 25 to 30 people from the mob then force their way into the place of worship, disrupt prayers and accuse pastors of illegally converting people to Christianity. The report also stated that in most instances, the mob even hurled costist abuses and engaged in physical violence. Even women were not spared and were sexually harassed at times. In most instances, the police soon followed the mob but did little to disperse them. The PUCL study found that instead of arresting the attackers, pastors and worshippers were arrested and charged under sections such as 295A. This section of the Indian Penal Code deals with deliberate and malicious acts intended to outrage religious feelings of any class by insulting its religion or religious beliefs. This led to the conclusion that the police were hand in glove with the mobs. The study also shreds the claims made by mobs and political leaders from the BJP on forced mass conversions in the state. The study quotes 1971 census, according to which Christians comprised 2.60% of the population of India. In 1981, Christians accounted for 2.44%, while in 1991, they constituted 2.33% of the population and 2.18% of the population in 2001. As per the 2011 census, Christians accounted for 1.87% of the population. However, at present, Christians account for 2.30% of India's population. The report thus suggests that there is no ground to statistically prove that conversions are leading to an increase in Christian population in the state. The report thus concludes that these numbers are proof that forced mass conversion is a myth, a bogey, that has been used to criminalize the practice of faith by Christians and reduce them to being second-class citizens. These attacks against Christians seem to have picked up in the recent past after, on September 29, Karnataka CM Basavaraj Bomai said that the state government was planning to enact a law banning forceful religious conversions in the state. The Karnataka government had also directed the Backward Class and Minority Welfare Department and the police to conduct a survey of religious personnel and places of worship, institutions and establishments belonging to the Christian community. Several leaders from the Christian community had flagged the move, saying it will put Christians at risk of threat to their security and right to practice their religion. In addition to this, claims of forced mass conversions have been given wind by Guli Hati Shekhar, the BJP MLA from Hosa Durga, who claimed that 15 to 20,000 people, including his own mother, had converted to Christianity in his constituency. Another BJP MLA, KG Bopia, also alleged that foreign missionaries had been carrying out such forced conversions systematically through some organizations in the region. The PUCL report, however, demolishes these claims and makes one wonder if the BJP government in Karnataka is giving wind to such claims and turning a blind eye to Christians merely to push its agenda of enforcing an anti-conversion bill in the state. If Karnataka goes ahead with these controversial plans, the state government could well be infringing on rights provided by Article 25, which grants freedom of conscience, practice and propagation of religion, and Article 26, which is freedom to manage religious affairs. For more such stories, log on to thefederal.com.